A viewer sent me their Super Nintendo Entertainment System because they've spent over $300 trying to fix it, including sending it to a repair shop that charged them $150, and then the repair shop couldn't even fix it. Well, let's plug it in and see what it does. I don't know if you can see that. The power plug is just like at an angle. That's a little worrisome. So we've got it plugged into power. We have it plugged into the TV. We've got a game installed. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay. Uh, it works just fine. Um, wait. Now we get no signal at all. What changed? Okay, so something happens where it'll get a signal and then the signal just goes out. If we reset it, then we'll get a signal again. So we get a picture for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then it totally goes out. Let's get this thing taken apart and see what's going on inside. So the viewer that sent this said that they spent about $150 in parts themselves, and then the repair shop charged them $150. These things are only $50 to $100 used on eBay, so I'm not really sure why they spent so much on this specific one, when they could have just bought one for 75 bucks on eBay. The viewer that I bought it from also said that he bought it from a guy that said it worked, but then it had a lot of damage and missing parts inside. So I'm really not sure what to expect here. Nothing too concerning so far. I feel like the game slot is pretty dirty. One of the things that can easily cause the problem we're having with this is dirty game slot pins. I can't imagine that's the only problem going on here, but we'll definitely need to clean this. We might need to give this power button a good cleaning. We got quite a bit of rust over here. It looks like maybe this system was in a pretty humid environment. But we got to get down to the main board to see if we can figure out exactly what's going on here. <laughs> this cable is basically destroyed. It was just kind of like stuck in there. I can't believe that. Look at that. Just each of these pins is just here on its own. That's crazy. So this system looks like it was in pretty bad shape and someone has kind of cleaned it up. I think that's probably why it hasn't been working very well. Yeah, we've got to give this a good cleaning. This might be one of the main problems, but we got to check the rest of the board just to make sure. This stuff is really good. Hey, Jessica, what did you say this stuff is again? It's Huel. You know, the complete meal that's been my go-to on busy days for the past few years. This video is sponsored by Huel. A big thanks to them for supporting this channel. You'll see me using Huel Black Edition Powder in this video. If you want to try it yourself, use my code TRONIX15 at huel.com slash TRONIX15 for 15% off your order. The link is also in the description, or you can use this handy QR code. I've been using Huel since 2018, and I love that it fits into my day when it gets really busy like on video editing days, or just any day when I don't feel like cooking. My recent go-to is the Huel Black Edition Powder. It's got all the essentials the body needs, protein, carbs, healthy fat, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. And it's quick and easy to prepare, which is really nice, especially when I'm in the middle of a project. Just give it a little shake. My favorite flavor right now is cinnamon roll, although I also am a big fan of their strawberry shortcake and chocolate flavors. I'd recommend it to anyone who wants something quick, healthy, and easy to fit into their routine. For me, it's been super helpful on long days when I don't wanna think about making a meal, but I still need to get the right nutrition. Plus, with Huel starting at 265 per meal, I feel like it's a great value. If you want to give Huel a try, don't forget you can get 15% off of your first order using my code TRONIX15 at huel.com slash TRONIX15. It's also linked in the description or you can use this QR code right here. Minimum order value is $75, so stock up and save. All right, let's get back to the video. Just looking on this part of the board, I don't see any work that's been done on this entire board. So. I'm not sure what the repair shop did. Maybe it's something over here, but so far, I don't see anything they've actually done. Okay, and here's the shell. And this is what I'm talking about. You can see all the, like, places they just kind of, like, sort of cleaned it, but it really, it doesn't even look that good. Okay, let's look at the board, though. We got some sanding going on. This looks like maybe somebody that refurbished it, but didn't actually do a good enough job. Especially like all the rust on this thing. And this is like new rust. So far, I'm just not impressed. So a few more screws to take out so we can get this big metal piece off and then we can see the whole board. 
And with this metal piece loose, we can finally get it off and have a look at the rest of the board. And just looking at this board, other than like some cleaning, I don't see anything anyone has done on this. Now the repair shop that worked on this, the viewer that sent it said that they replaced some fuses and then he got it back and it had the same problem. As far as I can tell, this must be the fuse they're talking about. $150 to replace this? Oh boy. So firstly, let's see if this fuse is good. I'm, I would be surprised if it was even bad in the first place, but let's check it. Okay, so the meter should beep if the fuse is good. It won't beep if the fuse is bad. And it is good, no surprise there. Also, like I said, I feel like the fuse on this probably wasn't even bad. I'm guessing that the repair shop just wanted to charge him $150. At least it looks like they did an adequate job replacing this fuse. I just think the chances are low that it actually did anything. Now we've got a capacitor over here that looks interesting. Let's pull this up on a microscope. And yeah, that's what I thought. This capacitor is leaking and faulty. Looks like this one is too. Yep, got some corrosion on the board here. I don't know if that's just, if that's a circuit trace or just some of the silk screen there, but that could be a problem for sure. It looks like it's a trace. That could be a problem. So we got to replace these capacitors firstly. Secondly, let's have a look at this game slot. Oh my goodness, look at this. Pay $150 for a shop to repair this thing and they don't even clean the game slot? I mean, come on. That's like the first thing to do. And this game slot is just in terrible condition. Look at all this corrosion. Same thing on the other side. I mean, look at these pins. They're just green with corrosion. I would venture to guess that if we just only cleaned up this game slot, it would probably work fine. Although those capacitors are pretty worrisome too. Okay, we know what we need to do. Let's get these repairs done. Now I do want to clean up this board before we get these things replaced. I'm just going to do this with a cotton bud and just kind of do a basic job. We're not going for perfect here, but there's kind of like a lot of gunk and grime in between here. Look at that. So also just help me make sure that I can kind of see what I'm doing when I'm replacing these capacitors. So it's crazy to me that this other shop had this thing and the board just looks terrible. As far as I can tell, the only thing they did is replace that fuse. That's the only fuse that I can see on this board. And it's crazy to me that they did that for $150 and then it still didn't even work after that kind of stuff. Just, I don't know, I don't understand it. How do those kind of shops sleep at night? That's what I wanna know. But that's why I take stuff like this and try to fix it because that makes it more interesting for me and hopefully for you, so, okay. Now that board is looking pretty good. Well, let's get these capacitors replaced and we'll see how it works after that, after we clean up that game slot too. And I'm just gonna mark this one so I know which way the stripe goes. Need to make sure and install the new capacitor with the stripe facing this way. Okay, now there's a number of ways that we can replace these capacitors. I'm actually just gonna use hot air. So I'm gonna come in with my hot air station and I will heat each capacitor up until the solder melts. Then I'll place the new capacitor down, make sure the solder is melted and made a good joint. And then I'll remove it and move on to the next one. There we go. So you can pretty easily see these capacitors were leaking pretty badly. I'm getting a lot of gunk off the board where they were. Just look at all of that. That's crazy. Okay, now looking at these traces, this one looks a little sketchy maybe. So does this one. So we need to check those. That corrosion just kind of ate some of that away. So we need to check all that. Same with this, it's eating away the coating on the board. So I'm gonna do some resistance tests. If you hear the meter beep, you know that the trace is good. This one, where does this one go? I'm not gonna be able to hear that one or this one. Here we go. Oh, that, okay. Okay, that one's good. That one's good. That one's actually good. It doesn't look good. That one's also good. 
And that one's good. So even though those traces don't look good, they actually are just fine. That's really surprising. Those capacitors are leaking pretty badly. But that means that we can just install the new capacitors. Now that we have that all cleaned up, that corrosion is gonna stop. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit better just to make sure that that's not gonna be a problem in the future. So I'm gonna clean everything off just a little bit better and clean it up again, and then we'll get these capacitors installed. Now I'm gonna bring some fresh solder in and redo the solder on these mounting pins, and then we'll get the capacitors installed. Okay, gonna bring in some flux. Flux it up. The flux just helps the solder flow. Now I'll come in with my large iron and some fresh solder and just put some solder on each joint. This is just gonna make it easier once we get the new capacitors over here. We'll make it easier to solder these on. So we'll have nice fresh solder to solder to. And here's our first capacitor going on. Now the next one. And we'll do the next smallest one over here. And the other small one down here. I like to do the small ones first because they're a little bit more difficult. The first larger one goes right here, just like that. Now I'm heating one leg and then the other. That's one way you can do it. You could also use hot air to install these, and sometimes I do that. Okay, all good so far. We've got two more to do, and then this big one. So you can notice it's kind of giving me some trouble. It's actually mostly just my fault because I'm being lazy and not putting more flux and solder on there. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, there's the flux. Probably just adding more flux is enough to do this. But let's see. There we go. Yep. When it comes to soldering, flux is magical. Okay, there we go. So all of those capacitors are installed. Now we need to get this guy. And what I'm gonna do is flip the board up on its edge. I'm gonna heat it from the bottom side and remove this capacitor and then just push this one through the holes while the solder is still hot. Okay, I'm gonna heat this from the back side, the bottom side, and then pull up from the top side. And there we go. Old capacitor out. New capacitor in. Now I do need to trim off these legs. One is there, one is here. And this solder actually looks pretty good, but I am gonna redo it just to make sure it's really good and solid. Sometimes that method of desoldering and soldering the new ones on can remove too much solder. So there we go. we'll just add some on this leg and then on this leg. And there we go. And just looking at this large capacitor, this is actually what they're supposed to look like. So this one probably didn't need to be replaced, but while I'm there, I might as well do it. All right, now let's have a look at this board with all of those capacitors replaced. I can remove this heat protection tape. Didn't even melt anything, that's always good. And there we go. All those capacitors are replaced. I do need to clean the board, get as much flux off as I can. I do use no clean flux, but it's always better just to get it off if you can. It's sticky and it'll collect dirt and grime, so. Plus it just looks better. Okay, now we got it all clean. Now the last thing we need to do to this board is clean this game slot. We know the capacitors were a problem. We also know the game slot's a problem, so I'm hoping after we clean this, this board is gonna work flawlessly. But let's get this cleaned and then we'll find out. So I'm gonna start with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. I'm not sure that's gonna get it that clean, but it's a great start. That'll help get the IPA down in the game slot as far as we can. And then I'm gonna use something with a little stiffer brush. 
just to really, really get down there and clean this thing up. Look at that. That looks so good. I am going to clean the bottom side too. I'm not sure the bottom side really needs it that much. because It doesn't look too bad, but it's not going to hurt. While it's out, we might as well. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking good. Now I've got one more step. So this isn't something I usually recommend, and I usually don't need to do this, but since this game slot was so dirty, I'm going to come in with some 1000 grit sandpaper and just push it down in there just a little bit and then just work it all the way down the game slot to get each pin. Same with up here. Just like that. And you can see on my sandpaper, it's pretty dirty. So that was probably a good thing to do on this one. I would normally not recommend something that extreme, but I mean, you saw the condition of these pins. They were corroded and they were just not in good condition. So now I'm going to come in with a bunch of isopropyl alcohol and that's going to really flush out anything we loosened. Okay, and then we'll let this dry. And now look at those pins. I mean, those aren't brand new, but those look really good. So lastly, I'm going to come in with some deoxit. Just put a little bit of deoxit on each pin. This is going to make sure that it stays clean. It's also going to help clean the games we put in here. This slot's going to work better than new. Okay, and after all that, do you think we finally have this thing fixed? Let's find out. I think we at least did $150 worth of work, but we got to get it back together, then we can test it. So board goes in just like that. Let's get the game slot installed. There we go. If only I remembered how the rest of the stuff went on here. <laughs> I feel like this is probably next. And then this guy, <laughs> so this is definitely not next. <laughs> this is next. There we go. And we need to put that on before we install the board. Alrighty then. Now we can install the board, I think. There we go. And then this guy, there we go. Okay, good. And then this guy next. And then after that, we've got this. We need a replacement part because these pins are just hanging there. So I stole one off of one of our other SNESs in here. So we'll be using this one instead. And this one just goes in here like this. There we go. Now I've got to get a bunch of screws in. And then this eject button goes in just like that. And then we've just got the power button. There we go. And I have a couple screws to put that in, and then we're ready to go. And now the top cover. And the screws on the bottom, and it's ready to test. We have the cables installed. We have the game in. Let's turn it on and see if anything explodes. Good so far. And is it going to turn off? Of course it's not. This SNES is now working perfectly. So in the end, it took about $5 worth of parts and some of my time to fix this SNES when a repair shop couldn't do it for $150. If you want to see a video where I tried to fix a PlayStation 5 that a repair shop tried to fix $300 to fix and they couldn't, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I could fix it. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.